Hello. In this video, I will be discussing how to run and interpret multiple regression with dummy variables using SPSS. The text file that I have open on my screen will be made available for download underneath the video description, as will a link to the data. Um, also within the text file, there's the, uh, this is the actual link itself. So let's go ahead and get started. It is a common misconception that only con continuous variables can be used as predictors in multiple regression analysis. However, it is actually possible to incorporate categorical predictors through the use of dummy variables. Dummy coding is a means of translating the grouping information associated with a categorical variable into a new set of dichotomous variables, which can be included as predictors in a regression model. In other words, regression analyses can incorporate grouping variables so long as they have been appropriate re re appropriately recoded into a new set of dummy variables, which is equal to j minus 1, or simply the number of groups on the original variable minus 1. Dummy variables generally have values of 0 and 1, with this coding facilitating greater interpretation of the intercept in regression models. The most simple dummy coded variable is the one is one that already has two values associated with it, such as gender identification, coded 0 for male, 1 for female. If your variable in the data set already contains this coding, then there is no need to recode. The regression coefficient for gender identification is simply interpreted as the mean difference, conditional on any other predictors in the model, between persons identifying as male and female on the dependent variable. The intercept in the model is interpreted as the mean of the dependent variable for the group that's coded 0, which in this case would be persons identifying as male. By adding the regression coefficient to the conditional mean for males, you obtain the conditional mean for females. So let's say that we run a simple regression when gender identification coded 0 for male, 1 for female, uh, is included as a predictor of a dependent variable called achieve and we obtain the following results using SPSS. So in this case, you'll notice in the results we have a constant, and that is the intercept for the model. So the value of the intercept is 94.847, and you can see we have the standard error right here. Um, there is no beta coefficient for the intercept, but you'll notice that we have a T value and the P value for that. Then on the next line, we have gender ID variable and uh, values of 6.306 for the uh, slope, there's the standard error, the beta coefficient, and then our t-value and our p-value. So the constant is the intercept in the model, and in regression the intercept is the predicted value on y when the predictors are all equal to zero. In the current model, with our single predictor, the intercept is equal to the mean for males, and that mean is 94.847. The slope for the predictor indicates the predicted change in y for one unit increase on x, which means that it is essentially the difference in means between males and females. As a result, the slope of 6.306 is interpreted as indicating that on average, females scored 6.306 points higher than that of males. The mean for females is simply computed as the sum of the intercept and the slope, which would get us a mean of 101.153. So let's run the analysis using uh, uh, some data. So I'm going to open up our data set right here. You can see it. We have our gender ID variable coded 0 and 1, and our dependent variable is achieve. So to run the basic analysis, first, uh, just note that gender ID is essentially already a dummy variable because it has codes of 0 and 1 on it and we can include it as a predictor of achieve. So I'm going to go to analyze regression, go down to linear and I'm just going to reset this. So we'll move uh, gender ID over to the independence box and achieve to the dependent. Click on OK and now we have our results. So you can see, kind of scrolling down here, you can see that we have our R square value uh, multiple R right here, F value and P value for the model, uh, all the usual information. But then down here below we have our coefficients table and this is essentially what you saw in the text file. So we have the constant, that's the intercept, that is the mean for males, and then we have the slope for the gender ID variable and that is the difference between males and females. So if you add the intercept and the difference between males and females you would get the mean for females. You can also see that within the model um, 
uh, that the predictor or gender ID was statistically significant, indicating essentially that females scored higher on average uh, on the achieved variable than males. Now let's say we run a multiple regression with gender ID and mastery goals, mastery goals being a continuous variable as predictors of achieve, and we obtain the following results. So in this case right here, this is our intercept, uh, and then we have each of our predictors, gender ID and mastery goals with their respective slopes, standard errors, um, in this case there's our beta coefficients, and then our t-values and p-values. So in this model, the intercept is a predicted value on achieve for the male identification group, coded zero, conditional on mastery goals being in the model. The regression slope for gender ID is the difference between persons identifying as males and females, again conditional on mastery goals. The conditional mean for females is simply computed as the, diff the um, negative 0.597, uh, taking the sum of negative 0.597 and 5.824, which is uh, the slope representing the difference between the two groups. So the conditional mean for females is 5.227. And as a side note, the intercept technically is a predicted value uh, on Y when the predictors are all equal to zero. And because the scale for mastery goals in our data does not technically include zero in the range of possible values, this limits our interpretation of the intercept. So one way to increase interpretability would be to center the mastery goals variable. And to uh, and uh, this is accomplished by subtracting the mean of the variable for mastery the mean of mastery goals from the original raw scores on that variable. And so then after including or after doing the centering and including mass, the centered variable in the regression analysis, we can interpret the results uh, as a conditional for the intercept as the conditional mean for males scoring at the grand mean on mastery goals. So let's uh, let's show you how to do this. So this is our mastery goals variable right here. So the way that I actually obtain this is I first uh, went into Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Descriptives, uh, clicked on Mastery Goals, moved it over basically, clicked on OK, and I get the mean for Mastery Goals, which in this data set it's 100. So the next thing that I did was I went under Transform, Compute Variable, and you can see right here I'd already kind of set it up, so I had to create a new variable which I'm calling mGoal Centered, or mGoal uh, period centered, and then I've got M goal minus 100. So when I clicked on OK, uh, I'll just do it again. Uh, you can see that it essentially saved over what we already had done, and this is the same number. These are the same numbers as what we had before. So this is the mastery goal centered variable. So now when I run the analysis, um, what I would do is include instead of the original mastery goals variable as a predictor, which would produce the uh, first set of results, instead of doing that, I can include mastery goals centered right here. And when I click on OK, I get those results. And so you can see again, we get our standard regression output. And then we have the same uh, values for um, our regression slopes, standard errors, etc., as what we have in our text file, which is presented uh, right, right here. So let me just again draw your attention to the fact that the intercept now is different because we've included uh, the mean centered mastery goals variable. So this is following uh, mean centering, that's the intercept, and this is uh, prior to mean centering. So those values um, are essentially uh, different. Whereas, um, and in this particular case, the set, using the centered variable produces a more interpretable um, uh, intercept. And you'll also notice that the regression slopes for gender ID and mastery goals and all the uh, subsequent values are exactly the same as what we had above. Um, let me also note that basically mastery goals would be interpreted, or the slope for mastery goals would be interpreted as the predicted change on achieve for every one unit increase on mastery goals. Now, when you have a categorical variable with more than two categories, things get a little bit more complicated. In this case, you must create dump multiple dummy variables to represent group membership with the number of dummy variables equal to, again, j minus 1 or the number of groups minus 1. When doing this, you'll need 
you also need to establish a baseline or reference category against which all other groups are compared. So the regression coefficients for each dummy variable are equal to the difference in conditional means on the dependent variable between a specific group and the reference category. And let me just note that when we ran the the analysis that included gender ID, the reference category was essentially male because it was coded zero. So for example, let's say that we have a predictor that's called education level that has four ordered categories where one is equal to very low, two is equal to somewhat low, three is equal to somewhat high, and four is equal to very high. To include education level as a predictor in a regression model predicting achieve, we will need to recode this variable into three dummy variables. Again, it's the number of groups minus one. And one group is going to be treated as a reference category. So below I demonstrate how to recode the original education variable into three dummy coded variables. Education level one is going to be treated as a reference group and is going to be coded zero across all three dummy variables. Education level two, which is the somewhat low group, is going to be coded one, zero, zero across the three dummy variables. Education level three, which is somewhat high group, is going to be coded zero, one, zero. And then education four, level four, which is the very high group, is going to be coded zero, zero, one. So we can see right here, this is the original education level variable with codes of one, two, three, and four. And you'll you'll notice that we have over here dummy variables. And this is just kind of demonstrating the system. So for the very uh, low group, you, you'll notice that we have codes of zero across the three dummy variables. Uh, for the somewhat low group, we have codes of one, zero, zero. For the somewhat high group, is going to be coded zero, one, zero. And then for the very high, we have zero, zero, one. And you'll notice that the information that's contained on the four groups is encapsulated in the three dummy variables. And also note that the uh, naming system is arbitrary. So the intercept for the regression model can now be interpreted as the conditional mean of the very low group. The regression slope for the uh, for SL can be interpreted as the difference between the conditional means for the very low and somewhat low groups. The regression slope for the S8 for SH can be interpreted as the difference between the conditional means for the very low group and the somewhat high group, and then the slope for VH can be interpreted as the difference in conditional means for the very low and very high groups. So going back to our data set, um, we have our original ed level variable, and I've already got it set up in here where I've created those dummy variables. So there's the SL dummy variable, SH dummy variable, and VH dummy variables. Now, how did I create these? Well, let me just kind of go ahead and delete these, and I'll show you. So basically, what I uh, ended up doing was I used the transform recode into different variables option. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to reset this so you can see it uh, play out. So we'll move at the ed level variable over to this box right here and you'll notice at the top it says numeric variable leading to the outcome var or output variable. So I have to create three dummy variables. So the first one that I'm going to uh, create, I'm just going to call it the, um, the SL and I'm going to click on change. So you'll notice it says we're converting educational level to SL. Next, we'll click on old and new values, and this box comes up. So basically, on the education level variable, the somewhat low group uh, has a code of 2. And so this is the old value on that variable of 2. And I'm going to recode it into a new value on the new variable to 1, and then hit Add. Um, then I can do the same things for the remaining groups. Instead, though we're going to be using our new values, we will be using 0. So essentially, we would say old value 1, add, and so we're converting it to 0. Then we also have um, 3, then add, converting it to 0, and then 4 to 0, add. So now you can see we have 1 to 0, 3 to 0, 4 to 0, and 2 to 1. So next we'll click on continue and then on OK. And so now we get that variable SL. So let's do it for the other two. And I'll show you a little quicker way of, of making the conversion. So now I'm going to uh, create the somewhat high uh, variable or dummy variable. So I'm going to, in this case, I could just leave this alone and type in a new name, click change. And so now we're creating 
the some somewhat high dummy variable. So we'll click on uh, old and new values, and I'll just kind of show you really quickly um, a little faster way of of making these. Um, these variables. So in, in this case a value of 3 on the educational level variable is the somewhat high group and we're going to convert it to 1 again click on add and then I can click on all other values and make them 0. So now when I click on add there you go and so it's, it's a lot faster. So now when I click on OK I get that variable and we'll do the same for the last one so we'll do recode again and in this case we'll make this a VH for very high click on change and in this case I will just click on this button right here and I can just uh, say old value is 4 to and so it's again being changed to 1 everything else is 0 in this case I'm just going to click uh, press the change button right here and so there you go so now when we click on continue and then on OK now we have our our three new variables so we have our dummy variables for somewhat low somewhat high and then very high now before uh, analyzing our data including those new dummy variables I do want to mention that uh, the reference category is an arbitrary uh, choice by you as a researcher so or, or it may be a substantive choice but it's basically up to you as to what group you want to be uh, representing as the reference category so you'll notice in this little system right here uh, what I did was just to demonstrate that group 4 which is the very high group you'll notice I've coded 0 across the three dummy variables making that uh, category the baseline or reference category so all of these other um, codes right here we're essentially comparing the very lows against the very highs uh, here uh, we would have the somewhat lows being compared against the very highs and then the somewhat highs being compared against the very highs so that's how you would be interpreting the regression coefficients within the model so let's go ahead and run our analysis we're gonna leave gender ID uh, in our model we're also gonna leave mastery goal centered in our model and then include the three dummy variables so what we'll do is we'll go to analyze regression uh, linear right here and we'll just go ahead and add our three dummy variables. So I'm going to move them over as well and click on OK. And so now you can see our R square is uh, higher. It's 0 0.409. We have again our F test is indicating that the model is statistically significant. And then we have all of our regression coefficients for our uh, intercept and our predictors. So once again, the intercept is interpreted as a conditional mean on achieve when all the predictors in the model are zero. For the M goal centered variable, a person scoring uh, zero is falling at the grand mean on that original variable. A person scoring zero on gender ID is identified as male, and a person with values of zero on the three dummy variables um, representing education level is falling into the very low education category. So taken all together, the intercept is the conditional mean for persons who A, identify as male, B, fall at the grand mean on mastery goals, and C, fall into the very low education group. The slope for mastery goals indicates that for every one unit increment on this variable, the conditional mean for achieve increases by 0.83 823 units. The slope for SL is not statistically significant. You can see its uh, p-value is 0.638, which is uh, right here, indicating no significant difference in the conditional means for the very low and somewhat low education groups. The slope for SH is not significant as well, indicating no significant difference in the conditional means for very low and somewhat high education groups. Now the slope for the VH dummy variable is statistically significant. So the slope is the 5.543 uh, and you can see right here we have our p-value and that indicates a significant difference between the very low and very high education groups. So in other words, persons in the very high education groups uh, based on the regression slope uh, scored 5.543 points higher uh, on average than those in the very low group. Okay, so that concludes our video on running and interpreting multiple regression with dummy variables in SPSS. Thanks for watching.